Welcome to club number eight and welcome to Stoke City. So yes, we are manager of Stoke City. This is our eighth club in the Yo Yo Man series. Now, I didn't think I was going to get any sort of summer transfer window after there was no job available when resigning from West Brom, which has typically been the sort of thing that's happened every single time. But a job did become available in the middle of July and that was Stoke City. The manager's position became very insecure. I announced my interest in taking over the job and prompted by my interest, the board then sacked their manager. So a little bit of manipulation was required to get this job to become available. Thankfully it worked this time. I've done that in previous seasons and it hasn't quite worked. I do think if you're looking to do something similar, it has to be very insecure. If it's just insecure, your interest won't actually prompt the board to end up sacking the manager. So we have made signings, but before we get into that, we will check and see how Stoke City have got on in recent history. In terms of last season, they actually finished in fourth in the championship and lost in the playoffs. The season before that, they were in the Premier League and finished bottom of the table. Season before that, they got promoted through the playoffs. Season before that, they were in the Premier League. And they got promoted through the play. They're a yo-yo team. They fit perfectly for this series. In terms of the season preview, we are predicted to finish in fifth place. So one of the favourites for the league, really. And uh, obviously, with a team that finished fourth last season, that is to be expected. The board are also expecting us to uh, reach the playoffs at a minimum, which is obviously what we will aim to do. But naturally, we are aiming for automatic promotion this season. And without further ado, let's get into the transfers. So I decided against going for wholesale changes. I just decided to add a few little sprinkles of players into the squad whilst being able to sell a lot of the dead wood. Now, some of it is not dead wood. Some of it is just a result of the tactic and formation we are using. A lot of the wingers have been sacrificed. We are using the same tactic that we were using at West Brom. I really want to give that a really good couple of seasons in the Premier League to see how we can, how far we can get with it. But anyway, let's go to the outs. We ended up bringing in £58 million in the transfer window, the first of which was El Amrani, who went to join Newcastle for £12 million pounds. He is a decent enough winger. In fact, he's a very, very good winger. But at 28 years old, he was a high earner. He wasn't going to get into my team. It's probably too cheap of a fee to be able to sell this level of quality. And maybe we could have tried to play him up front. But he wasn't particularly comfortable in any of the player roles there. So I just decided to cash in on him now. The next to leave was Robinson Ozoko, or whatever his name is. He's went to join Rebels Salzburg for 11.75 million pounds again. A winger, we could have potentially played this boy at left wing back. And to be fair, he would have been pretty good there. But again, another high earner that I just wanted to get off the wage bill and get in as much money as we can. Next to leave was Emmerich Guibert, who went to join Southampton for a fee that could rise to 13.5. But 11.25 of that coming initially. Another decent player, but at 30 years old, getting that sort of money for him made complete sense to me. Another big earner off the wage bill. Next to leave was Roger Guichard, who ended up joining Fulham for 11.75 million. Decent winger, we're not playing them. Jose Antonio Garrido could have well ended up staying at the club, but he's ended up joining Sir Linatana for 9.25 million quid. Uh, central midfielder was, I was imagining this boy playing maybe in the Metzala role. But again, at 30 years old, I'm looking to cash in on these sort of players. And the last one we'll actually talk about is Diego Poffer, who ended up joining Udinese for £5.75 million. Another winger, 31 years old. Happy to get him off the wage bill. There was one more sale, one free transfer, a loan deal to Everton and a loan deal to Sunderland. But that takes us to the inns, where we will start with Trif Junovic from Partizan. £1.1 £1 .1 million was his foreign fee release clause, foreign club fee release clause. And he joins us as probably the best centre-back at the club, I would say, at least the most well-rounded anyway. And uh, he will be in our first eleven for the rest of this season. Do I say this boy potentially being a starter in the Premier League? Maybe. Depends on the sort of funding we get once we get there. But the 20 determination was really nice to see. Well-rounded physically for this level. Uh, I want to improve that mark in this season uh, in particular. But everything else is pretty solid for a centre-half. And uh, I'm happy with the cheapness of the fee. Next to join us was Vedran Stamenkovic from Vojvodina. <laughs> he's Serbian, all right? I didn't know what it's called. Two and a half million quid striker. He's fantastic. I, I think this is probably our best signing, I would say. Um, advanced forward or complete forward of the two player roles that we are playing. He can play in either of those. And he's stupidly well-rounded. He reminds me of uh, Dabanovic 
who we had in the championship previously. Physically fantastic, technically brilliant as well, apart from his passing. Mentally is where he's weakest, but even then, it's still 12s, 13s, 14s in the right areas. So I'm not too concerned about any of that, and I'm hoping this boy will uh, have a very, very good season in the championship with a bit of potential to grow as well. So you never know, might end up making the grade in the Premier League. Next to join us was a bit of a punt. Oleg Korobov, 3.1 million quid. He will be our starting left wing back. Unfortunately, we couldn't quite get the player that we really wanted who was natural in that position. So we had to revert to somebody who was just accomplished. And this was the guy we ended up springing for. Defensively, he's terrible. <laughs> really, really bad. It's a good job of playing complete wing backs. So whilst obviously defence is still important, it's not so relevant. We want him to be attacking, want him to be getting to the final third and providing decent opportunities for our strikers, which hopefully he will able, be able to do with his 18 crossing. Oh, I've really signed some names this time. Bastian Stelwagen from Bayer Leverkusen for £3.3 .3 million. He will be on the opposite side to the previous lad as our right wing back. He is natural there. He's 18 years old. His potential has been downgraded compared to what his scout report was looking like. So maybe he's not quite going to make the grade at the Premier League, but still with plenty of room to grow, he could definitely be a capable backup for us. Uh, I think a decent enough fee for an 18-year-old German. Next to join us was Sebastian Calero, £4.5 million from Penarol. Now this guy it might end up being a little bit of a dud. He was attracting interest from a lot of big clubs in Europe, and I did look at him and obviously technically at least as a playmaker, which he's not playing as. He's absolutely unbelievable as a playmaker. He will be playing as a Metzala, which is still decent enough for him. All of the things that concern me are his dribbling. But apart from that, he's pretty well-rounded. A cultured midfielder at 22 years old. He's pretty much at the prime of his career. It still suggests he has one star still to go, but at 22 years old, we're probably looking at close to the finished article here. Um, but I'm still, he'd be good enough for the championship easy. And finally, the biggest signing of the summer, a £14.5 million minimum fee release clause was activated for Duval. Now, one of the main reasons why we signed Duval was I was looking at him for our, champion, our Premier League season with West Brom. He was one of my options. Uh, obviously, we didn't end up going there, but that means I know he has high potential for a Premier League side. So, uh, yeah, I was more than happy to pay the money for him. Well-rounded all across the board, especially his physicals. Mentally, he's great. Technically, he's brilliant as well. He'll be playing probably in the box-to-box -box midfielder role for me. He looks like he's pretty competent there and pretty... It does not take advantage of his flair quite as much, but I'm not looking for the flair players in the centre of the park. I'm looking more for all-rounders, well-rounded players who can bomb up and down the pitch and keep us defensively solid whilst providing support in the attack and I think this guy accomplishes both of those things. So that is it in terms of the transfer business that has been done. We spent 29 million, uh, sold 58 million, so 29 million pound profit as you would have it. In terms of our actual transfer budget and wage budget, what that means is we still have 35 million quid left with 177,000 pounds available in the wage budget. We did drastically reduce our wage budget as you can imagine as a recently enough relegated side Stoke still have a quite a lot of high earners from their Premier League days so uh, we got a few of them off the books anyway we have played two games already this season uh, two wins one against Ipswich away from home and one against Portsmouth uh, Ipswich was Stamenkovic with a brace he did get injured in this game so he wasn't available for the next one Neil Leefield with the other goal and in the home game was a 1-0 win against Portsmouth. Neil Leefield with the only goal of the game. Leefield's probably our best player at the club, or at least he was before any of our signings came in. He's very, very highly rated. And he was attracting, uh, I think, £30 million bids from Premier League clubs. I decided to keep on to him just because there wasn't really that many great options on the cheap and cheaper side. So we'll keep him for a season. We might end up selling him next in the summer, but... If not, he'll be a capable backup in the Premier League, I would say. So we'll quickly run through our best 11, should everybody be fit. Obviously, as you can see, we are sticking with the formation and tactic that was deployed at West Brom. The first of which of players who are already here, Harrison Clayton, the goalkeeper, is going to keep his spot. I was tempted to try and offer him out because he is 32 years old, 30k per week. Uh, there was Celtic interested who... There was talks of maybe a £13 million bid, which I probably would have accepted, but they didn't end up coming in with any offers. So I thought, we'll just keep him here. He's our first choice goalkeeper. And uh, haven't had a look for a goalkeeper in the market. There wasn't anybody that really tickled me fancy. Uh, next one is Housie. He's our captain for this season. F physically just fantastic for this level. 
Uh, mentally decent, composure, aggression, positioning, not so great for a centre-half. Technically, he's not so great either with a 10 mark. And, but his physicals will see him through this season in the Championship, no doubt about it. You remember this lad? Chris Jewelbis. We signed him for Leeds United in our Premier League season. I think it was for 6 million quid. And I think we're completely justified in that sign. And look how well-rounded he is for a deep lying playmate. He's got the attributes in all the key areas. It was I didn't even look for a defensive midfielder in the market. I decided Chris Dubelbiss was going to be our guy. He was also wanted by Selic. And again, if they'd come in with maybe 15, 20 million quid, I might have been tempted because he is 29 years old. But yeah. He, uh, obviously, we signed him for Leeds. He went to Bournemouth. He signed for Watford in the Premier League. Then he signed for Stoke in the Premier League. He's been in the Championship for a couple of seasons now. And I have no doubt he's going to be an absolute superstar in here. Uh, Barton, attack midfielder. He's probably going to be our starter, 27-year-old Englishman. Apparently, he's still got potential at 27 years old. I don't quite believe that. This is the finished article, what we're going to see. He's a good player for this level. Nothing fantastic. And obviously, the other one is Neil Leefield, the only other player who started at the club, who was in our starting 11. The rest of the starting 11 positions are all filled by our new sign-ins. Today then, our first match that you're going to see live will be away from home against Swansea City. I'm not too sure. That's, they haven't really been very, very good. They've been bouncing around between League One and the Championship for the past five seasons or so. Hopefully that means good things for us, but uh, let's get into the game and find out. So they come at us with a 4-2-3-1. Looks like they'll be playing on the counter whilst we are playing on the attack. Be interesting to see how that plays out in the first half. Let's get a kick off and find out. First highlight, it took 32 minutes. It's a corner for Russ that is cleared by the Swansea City defence. But Calero is the first man to the ball on the left-hand side. He plays it back to Riestra, who switches the play to Serginio Guerrero. Stamankovic goes for goal and goes close. A disappointing first half, I would say, but let's kick off for the second. We are dominating going by the match stats, but um, yeah, I want to see more from the lads. You know, before I turned on the camera, we were having highlight after highlight after highlight. The second I do a live com, we've had one highlight in 70 minutes. I've pushed our boys a little bit further on. It might end up costing us here. Hopefully it doesn't. Swansea City are on the attack though. Poirier to Farmer on this right hand side. We've got plenty of men back, so we shouldn't really cause too many problems. Thankfully, the long range strike goes over the top. I mean, what do we do? Very attacking. We'll look to maybe make some changes, see who's not performing. Lee Fields not having the greatest game. We'll bring on Andy Dunn for him off the bench. Uh, Riestra will bring off a Korobov, who's just returning from injury. Uh, and Gavin Barton will bring on Slagger for him, see if they can make any difference. Well, I think Swansea City have us here, but two minutes to go. We have a highlight. Come on, boys. Korobov. Oh, gets dispossessed straight away. I brought... I've signed him essentially for his dribbling and crossing ability, and it's just completely cost us a the game. We're getting beat. <laughs> I mean, yeah. We shouldn't be getting beat by Swansea, even away from home. I mean, I know we're a new manager, new signings, first 15 games, whatever. But uh, look at that. We should not be getting beat. And there we have it then, lads. The first live com of, this, <laughs> of the Stoke City part of this series. And we get beat. So that defeat sees us drop to 7th place in the championship. Our perfect record gone already after three games. In terms of the next episode, then, lads, it'll be somewhere in here. We'll be doing the midpoint and then uh, going on to the January transfer window probably after that. We'll fly through the championship season as we always do and uh, see how far we can get. But anyway, boys, if you have enjoyed today's video, please consider leaving a like. And if you are enjoying my content, get yourself subscribed. But until next time, take it easy.